So most people don't know who you are, at least certainly the people who weren't here all afternoon. So why don't you start by talking about the business, what you're doing, what stage it's at. I'm Nikki Hesford and I own Misfit UK, which is a ladies clothing brand for big busted women. Um, we ma manufacture blouses and dresses primarily, but hoping to launch our sub-brand called 28, which is a lingerie brand. Called what? 28, which will be spelt 228, which is going to be the sub-brand, which is bras just in a 28-inch back, which, as some people may know, is notoriously worldwide, just impossible to find. I knew that. <laughs> Huge issue. I cannot believe you're the first to come upon that. I'm joking, Nikki. Keep going. Any 28-inch back bras are generally an A, B cup. Um, you, it's impossible to find a sort of 28 DE and completely impossible to find something like a 28 H or a 28 K which is what we're hoping. I'm not even allowed to admit <laughs> expertise on this subject so. Yeah. Um. So yeah so we've been, up, well, I've been working on the business for about two years and officially trading since probably about the beginning of this year. And how's it going so far? It's going well but obviously as you may know when, when I started up the business it was with a very small amount of money so I started off with one dress and one blouse in three colours which was on our <laughs> website which did look kind of um, ridiculous and um, so it was slow starting but all the money that's coming on sales we've bootstrapped our way to where we are now which it's done well in nine ten months we've now got um, about 13 blouses and three dresses so um, you know it, it's definitely coming along however the problem is that all money that com has, has come in has gone straight back into expense in the range and now um, I need to find the money to manufacture A28 the lingerie brand but also one of our main problems is I get about 15 to 20 online inquiries each day from ladies who say I love your products I really want to buy them I, I can't, they're so fantastic however I'm a size 10 and I'm a 30g and your, yours only go up to an E or F which when I very first started I could only afford to manufacture one size range Whereas some people may be aware that Bravissimo have a regular, a curvy, and a super curvy. So you'll have a size 10 regular up to a D, size 10 curvy up to maybe a G, and then super curvy sort of a K or something like that. I'll take it on faith. So, <laughs> me, but you know. I, I actually may have lost the point there. The so when I started, because I had a very, very limited funds, I could only afford to manufacture the one size, which means that I'm excluding about 70% of the big busted market. Because, say, for example, a size 10 girl, can only, sh she'll only fit into my products if she's up to an F cup. If she's bigger than that, she'll so fit. So turn it on its head for the moment. Um, don't tell me where Brav Bravissimo is. Tell me where no one is. Tell me where the space in the market is that nobody is producing the goods for. The, the, talk about the customer who's the most frustrated, who can't get something. Well, who's in that? the UK, as far as my website, in the only, UK, yeah, there's only Bravissimo. That's all. Myself and Bravissimo who operate in this market for clothing. There's a few lingerie retailers, but mm -hmm. not actual clothing. And the ones that do exist worldwide and in the UK are, fall into one of two categories or both. They're aimed at the over 40s or they're extremely expensive, like $200 in America for one blouse. So if you're not over 40 and not rich, you have no yeah. So if you're sort of 20-something, you know, possibly even a model, maybe even had a you know, cosmetic surgery, um, you want something you know, quite stylish for work, you may be a graduate, you're going into a, um, a graduate role, KPMG, Deloitte, something like that. Um, and there's you, no stuff There's just nothing that. you can wear. Okay, so let's define the market you, that has the biggest problem. So that is, in your world, mm -hmm. 18 to 40, mm -hmm. Because that, they're an adult, I'm picking 18 somewhat randomly, but mm -hmm. essentially mm -hmm. mid-teens to 40, yeah. um, reasonably priced mm -hmm. clothing yeah. for that set of women who can't get the clothing that fits them, correct? Correct. And is that what you're producing today? A portion of that what you're producing yes. today? Fine. Any. And do you, have, do you have any sort of demonstrable evidence of the quantities of women that could buy and how much they would buy. In other words, you need, if you can size that market, if you can get a sense of exactly the size of the unmet need yeah. and what kind of range, the narrowest range that would mm -hmm. fulfill, you know, there's, I suspect like in everything, there's a series of staples, mm -hmm. core pieces of clothing that would sell and sell and sell. Yeah. And you know, the evergreen stuff. You need to actually sit there and literally dimensionalize that. Yeah. Say X number of pieces of clothing, number of women who might buy it, mm -hmm. here's who they are and exactly in this country. Mm -hmm. And then you know the quantity of money you can make. Yeah. Is that something you've kind of, an exercise as you've done? As far as we have done, I, have, I mean, I'm a big fan of Survey Monkey, and I've done survey after survey, and I've got quite a few responses. So I've got a rough idea of how many um, women who would be interested in this, you know, when I started up, it would be hypothetically, would you be interested in this if it existed? And the response on the street with my clipboard was, yes, 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 if it existed, I'd love it. Um, 
Also, recent Debenhams research has shown that 63% of their overall bra sales are in a D plus size, which suggests that obviously there's quite a few women who are D plus in size, as well as other evidence and statistics that have come out to say bust sizes are increasing through to genetics, through to surgery, various things. So adding it up, lots and lots of different pieces of research together, um, I, I have formulated that the market is quite large. Um, and from what I can gather, there's only about five brands in the world that cater for big busted women. I believe there's two different things going on. I believe that there's a lack of stuff in the market mm -hmm. because it's easy to know that it's not there because you can go out and look. Yeah. But I think you can quantify this a lot more. Mm -hmm. There's lots of, in fact, I would actually suggest you go to the British Library's Business and IP Center because they have lots and lots of data and they have research librarians mm -hmm. who know this stuff. But you could literally figure out, okay, how many 18 to 40 year old women are there in the UK right now? Mm -hmm. You could actually know that number. You could know just by some of the percentages that Debenhams Research mm -hmm. and others have, on the odds, what percentage of them are likely mm -hmm. to be of a certain size and therefore need what you've got. And you can take from that socioeconomic data that says, and this is the percentage that are likely to need this kind of blouse, uh, the percentage that are going to that kind of job, or if they're going to a job at all. And so you could actually probably narrow it down and say, this is the universe. Mm -hmm. The reason that precision is so valuable is you can also, you can characterize that person. You can say, okay, I can describe my customer. Mm -hmm. My customer is this woman. You started down that path mm -hmm. a few seconds ago. You described it as somebody going off to work of a certain yeah. size, of a certain age. By knowing that, you now know how to reach them. But even more to the point, you know what they're looking for. So you need, to, I presume you know what keywords would matter if they typed them in. Yeah, but one of the strange things is that, especially in the UK, um, most big busted women don't bother looking or searching for it. I've, I've done this in the sort of town centre, stopped sort of big busted women and say, you know, do you have trouble finding clothes? Yes, I do. I, I, can I ask you, do you often search on Google? Well, actually, no, I never have. Oh, why haven't you? I don't know why. I just assumed there was nothing there. And that, that that's a, now that's that nobody's an actually searching for it. So my job is to then actually go out and sort of um, re-educate all the big busted women and say we're here. You, I don't think you can re-educate every big busted woman in the UK. Let I think. them know we exist and let them know now something um, new exists. I'll tell you where your opportunity lies. Is where, where, where you've got a story. Mm -hmm. You've got a story in the sense, in, in stories, in, not all businesses have a story. Mm -hmm. And so you have an opportunity because you are fantastic grist for the mill for women's publications, for magazines, for newspapers. There's an entire tranche of editorial that is essentially waiting for you to exist. Mm -hmm. And you have an interesting backstory, as I happen to know. Mm -hmm. And so your own, your, your own story of having bootstrapped the company as a single mother, having taken it all step by step, this is a great piece of PR. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I usually give the advice, focus solely on prospects. Focus solely on people who are already looking for your product. In your case, it's just the opposite. You should focus on suspects, meaning you need to get out your word out to the broadest possible world. Mm -hmm. And so I think that you are, A, I think you're potentially an investable proposition, which I just never say. But I think you are, but I think there's work you need to do to make it utterly crystal clear to somebody who might invest in you exactly what it looks like. How much could be made? How fast could you grow? Mm -hmm. hey, B, I think you are a PR dream. You are, and you need to, you, you know, I, I have a theory. We use the advantages we've got, yeah. and we don't use the disadvantages. Mm -hmm. And thus, I think that you need to find a, somebody who's already effective mm -hmm. in women's clothing PR, specifically, yeah. and get you, persuade them that you're their first charity case. Yeah. You need to blag your way into the best PR person in the country yeah. who does this and say, here's my story, here's what's gonna happen, you're gonna have the best yeah. customer in the world, don't you want me? Yeah. Well, so far I've done everything as a sole trader, and you were saying earlier that know. everybody has to have you know, partners, so um, that's something that obviously has struck with me today, that I've always been a sole trader, I've never had any reason not to be, um, so um, now's probably the next job to sort of bring somebody on board, but um, you know, where'd you go? You put an ad the next step isn't to bring someone on board, the next step is to continue doing mm -hmm. your doing and figure out, as you grow, what is it you don't do well, and mm -hmm. when you simply can't do it anymore, then bring that next person. Bringing your first employee is going to be the hardest thing you do. Mm -hmm. Bringing a partner is easier, mm -hmm. but you want that partner to do well what you do poorly. Yeah. But I would say even before then, since you're up and running, since you've got the site, mm -hmm. since you want to maximize what you've got, I would start with PR. Yeah. And therefore, I think what you want to do is, if that person's out there and they're listening, that's mm -hmm. Nikki, Misfit UK. If they're not out there and they're not listening, I think you need to, find, you need to do your own homework.
and I, they're not necessarily in London, but they're probably in London, mm -hmm. and they run a PR firm, mm -hmm. and they are experts in women's fashion, and you're the charity case they should be taking on, as all people should take on an entrepreneurial mm -hmm. opportunity. And in due course, I think with the publicity, you'll find the capital follows. Right. Nikki, it's very nice to meet you. Thank you very much.